yeah just to kind of talk about the some housekeeping rules so as as for any webinar uh, the lines will be muted to avoid any background noise and distractions uh, but feel free to send in your questions uh, during the discussion we'll be taking at the end when we have the q and a uh, like 10 minutes or so for q and a and we are also recording this session just in case uh, you want to share it with any of your colleagues uh, and uh, kind of or watch it yourself uh, later at leisure uh, you can do that so we'll send you a link to that recording after the webinar finishes today let's move to the next slide So just to share the agenda, uh, today we'll be talking about uh, this uh, spring release from Salesforce and how Opkey plays a role there. Uh, we'll highlight the key things which are coming in this release, followed with a demo and uh, with question and answers after that. So I'll hand it over to Param, who heads this uh, particular uh, uh, the accelerator on Salesforce. So he'll be taking us through this session today. So over to you, Param. Thanks, Amit. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. So in today's uh, webinar, we'll be covering uh, what all changes, updates came in uh, Salesforce Spring 20 release and how uh, Opkey Salesforce uh, automatic solution ensure uh, you know, those changes from the Salesforce side will not impact your uh, regression back. So we'll be talking uh, about the features which we built uh, in Opkey which enable the whole uh, Salesforce uh, test automation experience uh, seamless. So we'll be covering uh, the first half of this demonstration covering uh, latest Opki update. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what we have in Opki for uh, different uh, uh, type of users, whether it's uh, uh, Salesforce uh, QA, uh, Salesforce developers, or uh, Salesforce administrators. We'll also talk about uh, Salesforce companion app, uh, specifically built uh, for uh, people who are uh, more familiar or you know want to work at the Salesforce level and don't want to uh, go to any uh, separate uh, test automation UI. Then in the next feature, risk-based uh, testing will cover how user will create the complete uh, risk analysis using Salesforce companion app and uh, user will be able to analyze those risks and the respective uh, test scripts and how user can uh, quickly do the auto healing of the test script to ensure their regression pack is uh, up to date uh, even after the Salesforce update. Then uh, we'll also talk about uh, one of the components uh, which is uh, autonomous in itself in Opti which helps user to uh, quickly create uh, autonomous, autonomous business components uh, which uh, will trim down the overall uh, test design time for uh, users uh, instead of uh, creating those uh, reusable components by themselves. So we'll uh, talk about that and then after that uh, we'll take care of uh, the Salesforce 20 update and what things as a Salesforce administrator QA we have to uh, uh, you know analyze and uh, think about before starting the automation and how what best practices we can use for that. So uh, let me uh, start with uh, the Opti update we have uh, in this release and how uh, these Opti will, updates will help uh, end user in doing their uh, test automation. Uh, with this uh, I'll switch my context from uh, Opti uh, slide and I'll move over to the actual demonstration part and then uh, we'll cover these three topics 
and we'll uh, move to the next uh, section there. So right now uh, on screen now uh, we can see we have uh, opkey uh, web interface uh, which is uh, available in uh, different hosting types the user will be able to install the opkey cloud version uh, we have uh, opkey uh, local hosting version as well which user can install in their uh, local premise Param, uh, we cannot see the we still seeing the slide Okay, uh, let me just uh, stop and reshare the screen. All right, is it visible to everyone? Yeah, now now you can see the upkey UI. All right. Right now, I hope uh, all the users will be able to see upkey interface. Uh, there are different uh, type of uh, artifacts user can create in Opkey. Uh, with respect to uh, Salesforce, uh, we'll uh, specifically uh, talk about what are the features available in Opkey, which will help user in doing the quick and autonomous uh, uh, test trip. With this, uh, we can uh, move on to our the first feature, which is uh, doing the uh, autonomous uh, business component creation. So in the tool section, now we have a feature where user can define their uh, Salesforce specific settings. Uh, here, uh, user can create uh, different type of uh, code. In case if user are maintaining uh, uh, of the, uh, sandbox or, or uh, pre-production or from the production or so user can uh, define all these orgs in this section along with their uh, details. Once this is set up, uh, user can uh, go to the next section, which is uh, create autonomous uh, business component. So this uh, autonomous business component helps user to quickly create uh, 60 to 70 percent of uh, the business component, which will uh, be ready in a matter of uh, minutes. And using this autonomous business component, user can create their test kit. So we'll uh, see that part in this demonstration. So now, uh, user can select their org which they defined in the previous section. First, user provide their org details, and user click on login. Opti will uh, provide an interface where all the objects which are part of that org, whether it is your sandbox production org uh, in a specific version. It will show uh, all the respective objects in that org. Now, suppose if user wants to create quick business component for uh, different uh, objects, and in this case, I'll take example of uh, two to three object types. So I selected account, and user can either select all the objects available in this org. So we can see there are 195, but uh, probably for M Q A team maybe uh, five objects were uh, relevant for their uh, testing. So you can specifically pick up which uh, object they want to use to create the automatic business component. You can uh, do the searching and uh, select a specific object. In the below section, we have the generated, uh, generate, uh, generate component. So this feature will help uh, the team to also create some generic components which will help or ease out the overall uh, test automation experience. This will uh, have uh, the components like uh, logging into Salesforce, performing the navigational level uh, activities and uh, doing the verification level activities. So after doing this, uh, once we click on finish, user will just wait for a couple of minutes and we can see uh, Opti already started working on uh, creating the automatic, autonomous business component. And once this is done, 
will refresh our interface and I will be able to see this component in the extreme uh, left side. Now we can see there is a new folder created with the default Salesforce location folder, which has uh, the autonomous business component created for the object which we selected from that interface. Now for account, there may be a different record type. So we can see here, there are different uh, reusable business components created by Oki. And uh, for end user, what this business component means and how this will help in creating the fastest uh, test kit in Oki. Uh, let me just open one of the components. So I just uh, opened one of the components for the account object. This has a record type uh, account SCO. In this component, we can see uh, there is a defined sequence of uh, steps along with the field name, which is there on the account object. So all this information is uh, picked automatically by Opki and uh, placed in a specific sequence. So now the end user, they just have to understand or you know call these uh, pre-built uh, autonomous components in a sequence in the test script and they'll be able to build their test script uh, in the fastest way. So let's see you know, how user can create uh, test scripts using this autonomous business component. So uh, these are the components for account and device object. For device, we just have uh, only one record set. So we can see there is only one uh, autonomous business component. We have the business component for login into Salesforce. And if I open this, so we can see there are two different uh, steps which will help user to login into Salesforce. Then for navigational, we have some other autonomous business component created. For uh, action, these are the autonomous business components created. So using this autonomous business component for different object types, user will be able to create their test scripts. So the next thing uh, I'll be doing here is creating a test script. So I'll create a folder with name test case. In Opti, uh, you can create test case from this wizard or by right clicking on this folder. So once I create this test case, now the next thing uh, as a QA we have to do is uh, call these reusable business components in a sequence to build their test scenario. So now uh, on the right side, we can see there are different uh, type of uh, tabs available. So this tab basically have all the out of the box keywords available for the Salesforce application. So we can see user will be able to do the complete uh, automation by using this uh, out of the box keyword. But uh, even uh, to do the test scripting faster, we automatically use this keyword and build this autonomous business component uh, in the autonomous fashion. Now uh, we'll add, start adding this business component in the test script. And this is simple, like uh, user can search what activity they want to perform in the Salesforce uh, or So first thing uh, user have to do is uh, login into Salesforce. So user just add this component in the test script in this section. Now after login, user can do the navigation, select, the, select or launch the app. After launching the app, now user can select the object from the launcher path. So once this is done, now user can uh, navigate to the specific object. Now user want to create a new account or device report. So user can click on new. It will automatically open the interface to create the new device record. Now after of doing all these sequence of steps, the next thing say user want to either want to create account object or device object. So either way, uh, user can start adding this component. Say right now if I add this, uh, business component, which is autonomous, uh, to populate all the fields in the device uh, object. So I just quickly added that. Now the next thing user can do is uh, 
perform the action say save if i want to save this record now uh, user can keep on uh, adding these uh, reusable business components to build their end to end uh, test scenario so next thing user can do is uh, add some validations do the global search or perform some other quick action create the related records and all so it depends uh, you know what activity user want to perform as part of their test scenario but yeah all these uh, autonomous business components will be created with a single click in oki the only thing left is uh, just call this autonomous business component in the test script and the next thing uh, we are left with is uh, providing the test data so in oki user can provide the test data from the local data repository which is one of the form of uh, providing the test uh, data to a test case in oki so user will get a tab all the way in the bottom with the name uh, local data repository and here uh, we can click on the plus button so this is the default name provided to this local data repository we'll change this name to device and once we click on this data button so user will be able to see uh, all the parameters are showing up now we can click on enable editing we can fill the test data in the relevant uh, parameters say if i want to provide the url so we can type in we can type in the username password consumer key secret key app name so uh well, i want to navigate to the app name say save i want to select the object say define and i want to uh, fill in the data in the device record with all these details serial number product unique identifier so you look at simply provide all this data save it and then uh, you can execute this test script so this is all what user need to do to create their test script so we can see this is uh, quite simple for any user to just uh, you know uh, configure their or use the autonomous business component feature in oki to create this uh, autonomous business component pull this autonomous business component in the test script provide that as data and their test script is ready with this approach as i mentioned the user will be able to automate at least 60 to 70% of their uh, standard and custom objects for rest of the 25 to 30% of the objects in case if uh, user use some uh, lightning web component especially in the lightning case then user can use uh, opkey's cisco specific test builder to add those uh, objects and build their uh, 30 uh, 25 to 30% of uh, or, uh, business component so effectively uh, user will be able to save huge amount of effort by uh, using these features so now uh, this is the part uh, which is covering how you can uh, create the test kits now uh, comes is uh, in case if user already created their test kits and after salesforce update user uh, will get some new changes from the salesforce side which we'll be talking about in our next couple of slides so how opki will ensure like those test scripts require minimal maintenance and uh, how opki enable those features to uh, reduce the overall regression maintenance cycle after every salesforce release up to 70 to 80% so uh, to have this feature we have uh, uh, feature in opki called uh, auto healing of test scripts which will be showcasing right now so this feature will ensure if there is any changes happen in the salesforce or this test script which are being uh, created by autonomous business component will heal in itself in terms of uh, you know if there is a field which got newly added on the layout or any field which is removed from the layout or even if there are changes in the field type which are uh, least uh, expected but yeah in case if these 
changes happened on the object's UI. Opti test script will ensure uh, those changes will be automatically healed as part of this test script, and the uh, you, you know end user they'll just uh, click on their regression pack execution and will be able to uh, get the complete uh, uh, regression pack automated in the automated autonomous session and uh, will be able to complete their regression without uh, spending much effort on the maintenance after this process updates. So to showcase that feature, let me just uh, uh, pull up one of the previously uh, created uh, autonomous uh, auto field test script, which I'll take as a baseline for this execution. And this execution now will run seamlessly on both Salesforce Classic and Lightning version. So as part of uh, Opti Salesforce solution, all the out-of-the-box features which end user will get uh, will support both uh, classic and lightning version and user doesn't have to maintain two different versions of test script. With a single version, user will be able to uh, you know, run uh, their test scripts on both uh, classic and lightning or our Salesforce. So now uh, this is my uh, auto green test script. So right now what I'm going to do is I'll just simply show the execution of this test script <coughs> uh, which will uh, create one record, device record. Then uh, we are going to make some changes in the object UI by adding some new field. And then now uh, we'll again play back the same test script and we'll see you know, how uh, seamless it is uh, for the end user without making any changes in the test script, it will automatically uh, execute the same test script to ensure uh, the latest uh, fields which are added on the UI will be automatically taken care by the test script. For this, uh, we'll just quickly execute this test script. So here on top bar, I have a playback button, which will trigger the execution on this local uh, server. So I'll write the name to this test. Provide the build name. So these are automatically filled up and users just have to select the execution machine. So you can run uh, the same script on multiple OS browser combination. So Opti, uh, as a feature where a user can uh, create their test script and then uh, run that same test script on multiple OS browser combination without uh, requiring an additional uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure. So I selected uh, the build name, execution machine name, and the plugin name. So right now, uh, as this is uh, our Salesforce uh, based platform, so we'll be using Salesforce specific plugin so this plugin will ensure uh, all the latest uh, updates which are coming from Salesforce site is already being taken care. And in case uh, if there is any new changes coming in the next release, so this plugin will be updated and will be provided to all the Opti Salesforce users to ensure they'll be able to run their uh, test scripts without uh, least maintenance. After filling all these details, clicking on the next button, User can provide uh, a couple of other details, like whether they want to take the screenshots and all. User can specify the step time out. And in case if user want to send the execution report to the respective stakeholders, so user can uh, set up the SMTP settings, provide all the email IDs where they want to send the emails after the execution is completed. Now, uh, user, if they want to run this execution on, say, uh, classic mode, so they just have to select the classic mode. In case if user want to select the, uh, perform the execution on lightning mode, so they just have to change this variable. So it's as simple as that. So uh, there is no need to provide uh, or update anything at the test script level. But the same test script will run on both classic, uh, classic and lightning versions. 
will just uh, change off of flag. Now I'm uh, clicking on finish button and we'll see this execution live. Now, uh, user can see the live execution on the server. But as I mentioned, like OK support uh, multiple OS browser combination where user can uh, take that uh, offering. And uh, once the execution is triggered on multiple OS browser combination, so that execution uh, can be run in unattended mode on some remote server and user will just get the report which they can validate uh, to ensure like all their business processes on different OS browser combinations are running uh, as expected. Right now uh, we can see the execution on the server is just triggered up is just loading uh, details from the remote server on this local agent. So uh, it seems there is some uh, network latency on this machine uh, because of that it is taking a little more time than expected in loading the execution on the server. So when we trigger the execution, uh, we'll be able to see the execution in live. So uh, after uh, this automatic inning of test script part is done, we'll cover the impact analysis and we'll showcase how user will get the impacted areas within their Salesforce org and how uh, user will get the complete information, what are those uh, artifacts which are impacted and uh, user can create a job of it and trigger the execution uh, without making much uh, effort on the maintenance side. Uh, so we can see uh, the source org is launched by Opti and we can see on top uh, it is showing a message like this browser is now being controlled by automated test software. Uh, Opti has the uh, inbuilt uh, synchronization feature in it. Right now we can see the org is taking a little more time in loading. So Opti has a timeout where it will first wait for 90 seconds to ensure all the component uh, backend components are correctly loaded uh, once that is done. So then Opti will move to the next step. And in case if uh, it will take more than that time, so Opti will uh, fill that particular test step. So now we can see the execution is started and uh, Opti started uh, filling all the details on the UI and since this is a autonomous test which will be self-healed so Opti will uh, provide some sample values in the fields for the lookup values it will automatically select uh, the value which uh, comes 
at the first place in the lookup. But in case if user want to provide their own specific health data, so user have that option as well. But of, as a feature where it will automatically create some random data, fill in the uh, object fields uh, for different uh, data field types, whether it is your lookup field, uh, your flex field, or date and time field. So it will take care of each field type. Now, once this is done, or we just save this record. So this is a very small execution. So or we just uh, populated all the values and save the record. Now we can see the execution is getting uh, completed and uh, we'll be able to see the execution report. Now we can see the aggregation is done and uh, we have the result. So uh, if the test case is passed, the overall execution will show as green color. User can uh, drill down to their specific uh, execution steps to see uh, what actually happened uh, during the execution time. Opti capture each and every screenshot to have our evidence of their uh, respective application under, step, under test along with uh, the date and time stamp. So this will be quite helpful for the audit purpose in case if user want to have their uh, uh, automation uh, reports, execution reports uh, for the evidence to present uh, uh, to the auditors. So these uh, evidences will uh, help uh, user. Now we can see uh, Opti captured the screenshot at every state. It populated uh, the device record. So now the next thing uh, we'll do is we'll just make quick changes on the device record and then now we'll play back the same test script which we just ran. And then we'll see uh, how Opti test case uh, will ensure like the latest or the updated fields which we added on the UI will be automatically uh, taken care by Opti Facebook solution. So I'll quickly drag a couple of other fields on the UI. Or I'll remove at least one or two records. If I remove this, though it is not allowing me to remove. Okay, so now I just move, I just added uh, one additional field here and I remove product expiry date. So once I save this, so now uh, we can see, okay, so this field is automatically added here. So uh, now what I'll do is I'll remove this field. This already has some value in it. So what we did is uh, we removed one field and uh, we'll see, you know, how Opti will react to this uh, field which is removed from the UI. So we'll uh, play back the same test script. In case if user want to make some changes in the configuration, so they can do it. So here uh, we are just playing back this script. Again, it is uh, loading some of the components on this local server before starting the execution. Uh, 
as you can see, there is little uh, network slowness on this server. It is taking a little more time than expected to download this uh, library from the remote server. So uh, now we can see the execution is about to start. So uh, right after this execution, we'll be covering uh, what uh, approach uh, user can take or the complete uh, QA team can take and uh, use the office uh, complete Salesforce-based solution and how quickly they will be able to build their uh, complete uh, regression pack. So we'll be showcasing uh, how much uh, coverage of this autonomous business component feature will give and after that, uh, what approach user will be able to take to complete their 100% uh, uh, regression pack. And after every Salesforce release, what will be the strategy will a user can take to ensure like uh, their test scripts will be automatically healed and they'll be able to uh, take the real advantage of uh, the test automation. Now we can see, uh, uh, downloading of the libraries on this local server is done. Office has triggered the execution and we'll be able to see uh, how Opti will react to the one field which we removed from the UI. The second field which was available on that record was uh, pre populated. So we just uh, removed that field. But yeah, we'll be able to see how uh, Opti will ensure if there is any changes on the field lay object layout. So it will automatically heal by itself. So it will not make any false positive or give any <clears throat> error message. It will ensure like the complete business process will be uh, run successfully and will ensure uh, the business process uh, will get updated by uh, in itself. We can see uh, the test data for this field is updated and uh, we'll be able to see the execution results. Uh, what happened to the field which we removed from the UI. Now we can see Opt is uh, saving this record. This course is taking a little more time in saving the record. And as, as I mentioned, like uh, Opt has its own synchronization uh, mechanism where uh, Opti will wait for specified time, which we provided from the execution wizard. Right now, I just took uh, 90 seconds. It will wait for 90 seconds, and in case if the application won't respond in that 90 seconds, so Opti will uh, provide a uh, message as a failure message, like uh, the application is taking too much time in loading, and user will be able to see the uh, result in the execution code.
and now uh, we can really see the sales force is taking long time and uh, opti will uh, wait for 90 seconds and then uh, it will quit this step safe and uh, will showcase uh, this step as a failure step now moving on to the next uh, part uh, I know this part is taking a little more time in saving the record, but uh, we'll move to the next step, which is our impact analysis feature and how this feature will help user uh, in doing uh, quick impact analysis based on uh, any Salesforce update or any configuration changes in there or so this uh, feature is uh, inbuilt in Opti in uh, both the platform in Opti standard platform and uh, Salesforce companion app. So here uh, we'll be showcasing the Salesforce companion app where user will be able to uh, maintain or manage the complete uh, org level information in the uh, through the companion app and the user will be able to do the impact analysis. Uh, with related to impact analysis, once the impact analysis is done, user will be able to identify what are those areas which are uh, on this and how many the scripts are impacted because of uh, any object changes or any configuration changes in the Salesforce org. So Opti will uh, provide the complete information in both the classic and lightning version. If there is any new field added on the UI or anything uh, got removed, so Opti will uh, provide this information as part of this uh, complete uh, risk-based uh, analysis report. So uh, we'll switch our uh, context to that platform and uh, we'll see that in live. So I'm just uh, logging into our Salesforce companion app. In this app, a uh, user will be able to log in into the same Opti domain where uh, we just created our test script. So all this experience user will get within the uh, Salesforce instance. So there is no need to move back and forth uh, between uh, Salesforce or and the Opti uh, platform. So user will get the same experience of any test automation tool within Salesforce or. We just uh, logged in into our one of our Salesforce org, where user will provide the details about their Opti instance. So after providing all these details, user can select their project and user will land on to uh, this dashboard page where uh, user will be able to see the complete health of their uh, different org, whether uh, you know, it's their sandbox org or uh, their uh, development org or the uh, pre-production org. So user can select uh, what is uh, happening uh, for my dev or and what is the state of uh, the regression pack which I just ran. Uh, based on the number of test uh, cases added in this uh, specific uh, regression pack which ran on the dev or Opti will automatically show the health. If the number of uh, cases which are still more than uh, the provided toll length, so Opti will uh, automatically show if this uh, graph like in the depth uh, instance for the regression pack. The app health is uh, not good and uh, then user can drill down into the details what changes happened uh, to the specific uh, regression cases which are actually making this uh, app health uh, in the negative way. So once user drill down into that so we can see there are uh, cases which are in past state or field state 
So right now uh, we just uh, executed limited number of uh, cases in this form. So we'll be able to see uh, just for the regression, not for the sanity. So now after uh, providing uh, all the details, uh, user will be able to uh, do the impact analysis. So there is a specific tab where uh, user uh, can go and do the impact analysis of their uh, pre-release and post-release or so to do the impact analysis users just have to take a new snapshot of the org so users just have to provide the details of the org say uh, if i have multiple org created for my own internal team or uh, internal uh, division or if single customer is managing uh, multiple other uh, clients then they can manage uh, multiple clients to ensure like their complete validation is being done from this interface. Now uh, here I selected uh, one of my org and its uh, respective uh, Salesforce instance. After providing the snapshot name, once user move to the next, but it will again showcase the complete hierarchy of uh, the objects which are present in this org. So now user can ensure like if they want to take the complete snapshot of the org or for the specific object. And while taking the snapshot, Opti will take the snapshot of the complete field level, uh, structure level, trigger level, and the layout level thing. So once the snapshot, I just took it for the account object. And in case if I make any changes in the account object, Opti will automatically highlight uh, like these are the changes happened in the account object and because of uh, this change how many scripts are getting impacted so after doing this impact analysis user just has to select uh, multiple uh, snapshot pre and post so right now uh, we can select that and uh, once we do the new analysis so user provide the details about the new analysis and once you click on finish, so it will generate an impact analysis report. In this impact analysis report, user will get uh, the details about what actually changed in the account object, along with the complete uh, UI level information, like uh, this is the UI, and this is the field which uh, got added after the release or making some configuration changes. And uh, this is uh, the report which we created for both uh, classic and lightning version. And here also we are uh, showcasing uh, like this is the pre-release version and this is the post-release version. In the post-release version, now uh, we can see there is a new field added with the name status for the account object. So user will be able to visually see this uh, type of uh, impact analysis changes in the org. And here it is also showcasing the complete details, how many fields are still unchanged after the release. And this is the only new field which is added. So we are capturing more than, uh, you know, one different uh, attributes of uh, field. Like uh, if there is a change in row, uh, column, state, and the type, and the, whether the field is required or not. So it will capture that, and it will provide a comparison report. So after uh, doing that, in case uh, say there are uh, multiple attributes or test scripts which are uh, impacted because of the change in the account object, so user can click on this uh, generate impacted artifact link, which will showcase there are uh, four different uh, business uh, processes and uh, this many number of test cases which got impacted because of any changes happened on the account object. So now user can quickly select all these uh, test cases and create a job and run it to ensure like uh, after uh, update all their uh, account specific business processes are working as I expected or not. And this uh, user will be able to do for any uh, object. So as part of QA uh, we can see how much effort uh, will be able to save because we are getting the complete information about uh, what are my impacted areas, how many scripts are impacted. So you can specifically do the risk-based uh, analysis here. So 
So now uh, moving on to our next uh, part, which is about uh, you know how uh, Salesforce and Oki releases are in sync. So here uh, we'll be able to see now uh, with every Salesforce uh, release, we'll be creating uh, one patch update. Uh, this patch is uh, prepared uh, based on uh, say if uh, we are still in the pre-release cycle, we'll do our internal uh, test of the Opti patch to ensure all the critical areas, impacted areas in the Salesforce all are being uh, updated in our plugin. We'll provide that plugin to the uh, client. And there are two type of uh, plugins we'll provide as part of uh, our uh, Opti releases. One is optional updates and one is mandatory updates. During the preview cycle, uh, we'll uh, make the changes in the in our uh, Opti plugin. Uh, and then we'll uh, provide the latest uh, version of uh, the plugin to the customer so that uh, they can run it against their existing regression pack to ensure everything is uh, working as expected. And there are uh, some uh, seasonal updates from the Opti site, uh, which have uh, the new feature request, which we received from the customer, or some uh, specific uh, features, uh, which we are releasing as part of our uh, uh, internal roadmap. So those are optional updates, which user, if they want to work, so they, they can take it, but with every Salesforce release, the mandatory part is to take the Salesforce plugin so that uh, the existing regression path will work as, as is. Information about the Salesforce uh, updates can be found from this uh, below link to ensure like uh, when to reach out to the Opti team for taking their uh, respective update and we will be sending the notification to our existing customer uh, to ensure their uh, sales, Opti Salesforce uh, plugin is up to date. For the uh, summer 20, we'll be uh, providing, uh, we'll be starting the internal, uh, uh, providing the patch updates to the customer in the uh, April and uh, during the previous cycle and during the sandbox uh, update, uh, we'll be starting uh, giving the final, uh, which is the mandatory update. These are the couple of other changes which uh, happened in the Salesforce uh, release. Uh, and we can see there are some customers who are still managing their uh, open framework like uh, working with uh, Selenium and Java. So uh, here we can see like after uh, any update from the Salesforce site, they have to spend so much effort in uh, just maintaining uh, their existing regression path. But with the uh, Opti, uh, we are ensuring like all this uh, updates are being uh, provided as part of the Opti uh, seasonal uh, release plan and users do not have to make any changes. In the recent past, uh, we uh, saw like there is a shadow root element uh, update we received from the Salesforce site for which uh, many of the customers uh, they, which are still using Selenium Java, they have to spend so much effort in just uh, maintaining their existing regression back up and running. But uh, with Opti's uh, Salesforce plugin, they'll be uh, ensured like uh, they are up to date uh, within now uh, one week time. There are uh, some other updates uh, on the Spring 20 site uh, related to the sandbox, which is uh, quite uh, critical for uh, the QA team, which are uh, the sandbox uh, uh, cloning features. So in the winter 20, uh, we understand like uh, there is one uh, data feature which is provided from the Facebook site where a uh, user can clone their sandbox source to another sandbox source, which this feature was not available. And the uh, user can keep the same version of their sandbox so that uh, the complete test data from one sandbox or can be migrated uh, seamlessly. So here, uh, with Opti uh, Salesforce plugin, user can even uh, test their uh, business scenarios on two different versions. Say, well, if 
user is still on uh, Winter 20 and uh, they also have one org with Spring 20. So they'll be able to test uh, the complete regression back on two different versions. So now that feature is there. Then we have the feature like uh, data masking where uh, user uh, will be able to mask their uh, data, which is uh, the general updates or some uh, variables or uh, fields which are not mandatory for the end user. So user will be able to mask those fields and uh, user can also apply some configurable rules whether to you know, uh, enable or disable those fields or uh, just keep it uh, from the migration cycle. So a uh, quick overview of the approach. So here uh, with the autonomous uh, business component, uh, as, uh, we just saw like user will be able to maintain 60% of uh, their entire regression coverage with a single click. Now the only uh, effort left uh, is to use those autonomous business components, build their district. The rest, uh, 40, uh, 5 to 30% of the effort in case if user has some specific uh, these are four pages with specific uh, elements or lightning web components on it. So you can use Office uh, test builder to ensure like they are covering the 100% of uh, the regression back and they'll be able to uh, build their complete uh, regression suite with uh, using these two features available in Opti. After any update from Salesforce side, Opti user uh, or the QA team can use uh, of this automatic uh, impact analysis engine to ensure what are those impacted areas and uh, user can use the automatic or self filling feature of uh, of key and uh, they can now merge it back into the existing regression pack so this way user will be able to update their complete regression pack with the minimal uh, effort uh, and in the autonomous way which is actually compatible to both classic and lightning version so, so uh, yeah thanks Thanks, Param. So we are out of time right now. It's almost uh, top of the hour. So uh, right now we'll uh, still take the questions. So in case some of you are not staying back, you can lo look at the recording. So let me start with the questions which have come from the attendees. So the first question is, uh, uh, when searching from a reference field like product, can we set top key select specific uh, product based on certain searching criteria? say product family yes. equal to subscription for specific test scenario? Yes. So as part of uh, the Opti test data repository, we can provide all the search criteria. And in Opti, we have the feature like uh, automatic uh, test data generation where user can define their own patterns or sequence of patterns. Uh, where user can uh, provide this specific uh, field types or field values. And Opti will automatically use that uh, pattern or specific test data and fill it out. So yes, the answer to that question is yes, we can do it in Opti. Okay, the second question, uh, can Opti validate validation rule? So uh, right now uh, uh, we are uh, working uh, on that part uh, because the validation rules are mostly covered on the FX code. So uh, in the next, uh, Coming uh, Opti releases, uh, we are uh, will be bringing uh, validation of the uh, or verification of the validation rules as well. So right now uh, we are just ensuring whether the layout level changes, uh, trigger level changes, or the layout level changes are being uh, uh, you know uh, up to date. Or if there is any impact, so Opti will automatically provide you the impact analysis. So validation rule uh, will be coming in our upcoming release. Okay. Next question, uh, if we use Visual Force and Custom Controller, can we set Opkey to run through test cases for that custom enhance, enhancement? Yes, so we just uh, saw Opkey test builder feature, which will uh, take care of uh, the Visual Force pages or any custom controller. So uh, as part of the autonomous business component also, we'll uh, uh, you know, ensure like uh, we are covering almost uh, 60% uh, of standard plus custom objects, but in case if there are some uh, visual force page or some custom elements are not being identified by the autonomous business component feature, then user can anytime use the Opti test builder, which will ensure uh, to provide the 100% coverage uh, for their regression time. Okay, next question. 
can opkey capture test scenario where I update a field on an object and a workflow rule triggers a field update and sends out email notification and outbound message. Yes, so this is a typical uh, use case. We are uh, user can just uh, put a valuation point if uh, the workflow rule is triggered. So based on that, uh, we can put a checkpoint like uh, send the email uh, to the specific stakeholders. So this is a, a common scenario which uh, user can implement using Opkey's out of the box keywords. Okay. Next question. Uh, please suggest any better solution for maintaining element locators, which will be changing for each release. So answer to that question is uh, typically if user is just using Chrome based uh, XPath locators or some other attributes which are quite generic. So user will have to face this challenge uh, with every Salesforce update or uh, uh, seasonal releases. We are uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, even uh, Salesforce, uh, you know, won't recommend you to go with the uh, traditional XPath uh, way of searching the elements because these are so dynamic. So uh, as part of uh, Opkey uh, Salesforce solution, uh, what user will get is uh, the specific attributes, uh, which we are calling as the metadata API, which will ensure 100% robustness uh, with every Salesforce release, so that the user do not have to spend uh, so much time in just maintaining the test script instead of uh, you know testing their uh, business workflows. So answer to that question is uh, there is no. Uh, open source solution as such, but yeah, uh, with Opkey, user will get the complete uh, set of out of the box keywords along with the metadata API uh, based uh, recognition, which will help uh, user to do the least maintenance uh, at the locator level. Okay, the last question is, uh, uh, does your tool support classic and lightning versions both and is that uh, only one script for both these versions or it write two different scripts? Yes, so during this demo, uh, I demonstrated the uh, user just have to maintain one test script. Opti has uh, out of box uh, keywords, which will ensure uh, supporting uh, both the versions, uh, classic and lighting, and there is no uh, need to create two separate scripts. So there will be one script which will run on both classic and lightning versions. Okay, and the auto heal will apply to that script, right? So uh, user can use auto healing uh, feature in Opti, which will uh, ensure like uh, the same test script. If the new field is added on the layout, uh, so Opti test script will run seamlessly on both classic and lightning version without making any changes. Okay. All right. So that's all the questions were there. So thanks everyone for staying uh, beyond the time. Uh, sorry, we ran over time a little bit because we had a lot to cover today. And thanks, Param, for a great presentation. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us over email, and uh, we'll uh, send you the link to this uh, webinar. And any other questions and any specific demos you want us to set up with you? Yeah, we are uh, available for demo as early as tomorrow. So yeah, look forward to hearing back from you. And thank you everyone for attending. Thanks, Param. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Amit.